What you guys got another video here for you in this one we're going to be taking a look at how we can resolve any sort of issue with our home network where we're trying to share files or stream movies or any of that sort of stuff on our home network now also another thing that i want to point out is that windows 10 has changed a lot with the uh, home group that's now been removed and uh, you may still run into issues with trying to connect to NAS drives and other devices on your home network. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the steps that you can take to try to fix a lot of these common issues that people are having sharing files on their home network. So assuming that you've got either a NAS drive or you're trying to stream movies or stuff across your home network and you're having issues, then this video is for you. So first off, I've got a, a NAS drive here turned on and I'm just going to go to my network here. Now, sometimes you don't get the discovery of your NAS drive or sometimes it does get discovered. And uh, when you click on it, uh, it tries to connect and then you don't get it connecting. And this is a common problem uh, with home networks and NAS drives and stuff like that. So if you do share content via NAS drive on your network and you're having issues, you can see it's starting to struggle here to uh, connect. And this is, means it's searching uh, for this and it's either being blocked or there's some sort of service not running or something like that. And I'm going to go through some of the steps that you can take to try to fix a lot of these issues. And there we go. We've got an error message popping up saying error code and this one here. Now, I've made videos on how to resolve issues like this. And you may still have some other problems because Windows 10 is changing all the time. And when you click the diagnose, you don't get any sort of um, fix for it because it says it can't identify the problem. So the first port of call is to look at your firewall. If you've got a firewall on your system here, like I've got zone alarm here and it says my computer, my computer is protected, you may have ESET, um, something like that on your system or Bitdefender, Kaspersky, any of those uh, types of uh, home security type software on your system that is locking down your system. You can see your computer is secure and it's going to lock it down and stop things from working. This is a very common issue and people don't know how to use firewalls and uh, you need to learn how to use a firewall properly. And once you do, uh, you'll, you don't really need antivirus software once you've got a firewall because it will block a lot of stuff that's coming in, in and out of your computer. So let's go to the view details on the Zone Alarm Free Firewall, which is the one I use. And uh, we're going to go to the basic firewall settings here uh, because this blocks uh, invasions and hacker activity. Click on this and I've just turned the NAS drive on and lo and behold, you can see here under the log viewer, we do have some information action blocked. So that's where I'm going to be looking. And this, this looks a, a very common uh, IP address for our home network. So let me just go ahead and see more info. And if I bring this across here, because it was on the other screen, you can see here, um, Zone Alarm prevented your computer from connecting to port 445 on another computer. Um, no breach in security has been occurred. Your computer is safe. What happened? Well, now it gives you some information about accessing the file or printer uh, shares on another computer located on this IP address. So we now know that this is more than likely something to do with our NAS drive. And you can check, test at your network. We can run this command prompt as administrator here and you can do ARP forward space forward slash a and this will give you everything that's connected on your network you can see here dynamic uh, connections here and you can see it here so what we're going to do is we're going to go in now what you need to do is add this to your trusted zone and you can do it from here as well add to zone and you can also do it view zones and you can add a zone inside here. So you just basically add a IP address. I 
192.168.0.3. You just add that in there like so, click OK. And we now have this in our trusted zone and click OK here. And hopefully when we go back and test on our network, and straight away we're in. And the reason why is because that's not now being blocked by our firewall and it just allowed that to go straight through. So that's the first thing you need to get right. So next up, we're going to go to services and open up the services tab here. There we go. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that certain services are running correctly. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to share stuff on our network. And you can see these two here, these function ones are just these are function discovery here. You want to make sure that these uh, are running. And the way you do that is make sure they're on automatic and make sure this service is grayed out on start and it is running. If it's not, and it should say server status is running, make sure that is correct. Same thing goes for this one. And uh, this is gonna be useful uh, because obviously it's to do with uh, be, um, network discovery and stuff like that on your computer. So you wanna make sure that is running as well. So I'm going to come down here and what you want to make sure is this one is running your SSDP, which is your discovery. And you can see here discovers network devices and services that use the SSDP discovery protocol, such as UPnP devices. So make sure that this is set to automatic as well and that is running. The service should say running. If it's not, you need to start that service, okay? Then you want to check the TCP IP NetBIOS helper. Make sure this is running as well. You can see here, provide support for the NetBIOS over TCP IP NetBT service and NetBIOS make sure that that is okay and it's started and running that's on manual and you just make sure that it is running it should say running and it's started okay then you can drill down a little bit further and look for the upnp uh, device host make sure that this is running also and uh, you can set this to automatic if you wish uh, but just make sure that they are running and working okay on your system Okay, so we finished inside the services area. So next up, what we want to do here is we want to go to our network icon here, open up network and internet settings. And uh, what we want to do is go to change adapter options and then right click on our ethernet and just make sure in your TCP IP version 4, internet protocol version 4 that is here. Double click on this and just make sure that in the advanced area, if you're running uh, obtain an IP address automatically, then we should be okay in the default section here. But if you're running a static IP address, then you will need to enable Net, uh, NetBIOS over TCP IP. You see it here, it says, that use NetBIOS setting for DHCP servers if static IP address is used or the DHC, uh, DHCP uh, server does not provide NetBIOS settings, enable this one. So you can enable this one here, like so. And then, okay, that reboot the system. While you're in here, you can also change the connection properties and uh, you wanna click on this one. And you'll now see that the properties are, you can either be public or private. Um, for a network you trust, such as a home network, uh, your PC is discoverable and can be used for printer and file sharing if you set, uh, set this up. 
So just remember, if you're sharing stuff across the network, it needs to be on this one here. Um, the public one here, your PC is hidden from other devices on the network and can't be used for printer and file sharing. So just make sure that you are set on the right one here. Next up, what we're going to do is go to GP edit. Open up the group policy editor and we're going to make sure that we've got a few things done inside here. So what we're going to do is on the computer configuration, administrative templates, drop this down under the network area, pull this open. Let me just widen this uh, up here so you can see. So you've got uh, your you've got your landman workstation here and you want to make sure that we uh, let's see here enable insecure guest log uh, logons so just make sure that you double click on this one and that you enable this is what we want to do and you can see here network attached storage appliances acting as a file a server so apply it and okay that one And the other one you want to check here under the computer configuration, Windows settings, local policies and security options inside here on the right hand pane. You want to drill down and you want to look for network security, land manager, authentication level. Just make sure that you've got this on send LM and NT LM. Okay, there's a big list here, but just make sure it's on that one. And you should be okay. I've already got it on that one. Now, the other thing that you can do is go to control panel and just make sure that everything is okay inside. Here. So what we're going to do is go to programs and features, go to turn windows features on or off. And you can do that in this search as well. If you go down to here and do turn windows, you can see it here, turn windows features on or off. So you can do it either way. It really doesn't really matter. Whatever way floats your boat. And then what you're looking for here is you want to come down to where it says SMB 1.0 and you want to make sure that you've got the tick inside here okay like so all the ticks inside here all these three ticks and then okay that one this box will pop up and just let it do its thing okay so moving on uh, to you may want to reboot your computer there but moving on to the sharing part now just to make sure that your shares are all correct and I'm just going to show you some of these settings here to make sure that that is okay so go to your sharing options and I'll click on this one here and just make sure that this is all correct here so in your private turn on um, network discovery and turn on automatically set up network connected devices leave this on and also uh, turn on file and print the sharing same thing for guest or public and underneath your all networks just leave this as default apart from the one at the very bottom where it says turn off password protection sharing leave that as is you don't want to leave the turn on password otherwise you're going to run into problems once you've got that done um, we can then go on to our next step which is opening up in this pc here choose what folders you want to share right click and go properties and under the sharing area here, you'll see if there's a network path here and you'll see whether it's being shared or not. Um, but what you wanna do if it's not being shared, just right click first, 
go to where it says give access to this own group area is no good so go to the specific uh, per, uh, people open this one up and make sure you do the drop down to everyone add this in your list now you can change the permission level to uh, read and write if you wish if you want them to delete files and stuff like that but if you just wanted to read them just leave it on read and then click share and you'll see a little message here this is to do with uh, when the computer is asleep um, but just click done and now go back and right click on your folder that you're sharing go into sharing and you can see here advanced sharing and share the folder with uh, videos and this is where you can set it up for full control or whatever you want as well and once you've done this you can check it to make sure that you're seeing uh, the shares inside there there you go so now seeing videos and we are seeing our other shares that we've got on the network and the more stuff you're sharing here will all be displayed inside here so that's another thing and uh, I just want to quickly uh, make sure that you've got your media streaming set if you are looking to stream uh, movies from the folder so we'll go to open network and internet settings go to your sharing options here and inside all networks you should see your choose a media streaming option here and uh, basically this is for your uh, when you want to stream media here so people and devices on the network can access pictures music and whatever you're basically sharing so just click on this and make sure that this is set to local network here and you can customize you can see we've got this set up ready and it's allow make sure they're on allow if there's no ticks in here make sure you put that tick inside there otherwise it won't um, allow you to share okay and you'll see allow all computers and media devices so you just do that one and it will make sure that it will allow that to share anyway that's about it for this video my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk that's basically how you can share all your content on your home network thanks again for watching guys bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my youtube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos